cutting green. So this is the target area. So therefore, higher horizontal illumination is a must for putting green. It is important that players can recognize this area from afar. The bunkers alongside can also be highlighted to add reflectance to the overall area. But it's really not necessarily like what I mentioned a while ago about the hazards and bunkers. The horizontal lux level requirement for putting green is higher compared to the other areas. The lighting design technique is also bidirectional, similar to the teeing ground, to avoid shadowing the ball. Lux level for horizontal for class 1 is 250 lux and for class 2 is 150 lux. The overall uniformity for class 1 and for class 2 is 0.7. Multi-directional lighting to avoid shadows is necessary and a good lighting techniques. High level of horizontal uniformity, like what I mentioned, 0.7 is a must. And then glare rating is maximum 50 and again CRI is 60. Um, the image shows the putting green with flag stick and the lighting calculation screenshot showing the bidirectional floodlight aiming with calculation points. So these are the pictures. All right, I will give you more details on how to do it in our hands-on tutorial. I'm sure you are very excited now to reach that chapter, but do not skip ahead. It's important to, le to learn the basics first. Overall, there must be separate lighting calculation points for every area along the whole course. Glare on the opposite and adjacent course must be avoided at all costs, either by blocking the lights using tall trees or be carefully avoiding aiming the floodlights towards those areas. The space above the bunkers and water features must be included in the vertical. Yes, that's what I mentioned a while ago. Do not forget that it's always important to see the flight of the ball. This tiny dimpled ball must be seen from afar. So it's a must to have a good vertical illumination. Okay.